Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I know the hair is gonna sound a little different today. I just had to get it out of the high pony. I had to get it out of the high pony. I'm about to wash it. I just kind of manhandled it and have a bunch of like butterfly clips. I got a reverse braid going on. It's got zebra. I've been recently inspired by my three look videos and now that I have a groove, I figure out how to remove my eyeshadow effectively using my Bioderma because she really is the game changer for these three look videos. I decided to do three look videos for most of my eyeshadow palettes. And we will start with Mama Pat. And also, I've been very overwhelmed by the recent makeup releases and the fact that I don't have an unlimited makeup release budget as much as I would want to. Even if I did, I feel like I have so much already and I have to play with what I have. And Amber said the same thing in her January Favors video. Go check it out if you haven't already. I'll put the link down below in the description box. She's also getting overwhelmed. It's like, how much more can we possibly buy? So I'm going to concentrate on doing three looks and I think it's helpful especially if you own a Pat McGrath eyeshadow palette, the Mothership specifically. These are $125 each. If you love to collect makeup and that's the only purpose it serves, great. But if you find that you're a little stressed because it's sitting in your drawer, you don't know how to use it, not utilizing it for daily looks, for work, for parties, or anything in between, hopefully these three look videos will kind of help in terms of offering some inspiration maybe we'll figure out how to do different looks using each mothership palette i also want to do these three look videos with her smaller mothership palette so we'll get into that i'm not going to stop buying you makeup but i'm just going to slow it down a little bit i don't know about how much but i'm going to try without further ado friends if you want to see the first look coming from mothership three subversive because this is my favorite one then please keep on watching hello friends if it's your first time here my name is alicia and welcome to my channel kinky sweat kinky hair sweat life if you love anything remotely movement related bar body weight training bronzer eyeshadow palette pat mcgrath then you've come to the right place all my pat mcgrath videos are on a pat mcgrath playlist if you want to binge watch your butt off everything from reviews swatches comparisons using pat mcgrath with other eyeshadow palettes knock yourself out it's a ball and with all that said All right, eyelids are already kind of prepped, but looking at them now on camera, I think I have to prep them some more. And also lighting you up a touch more. Going in with my Fenty Beauty Instant Retouch Concealer in the shade 3. No, that's not the right one. I usually use 235. I don't know where she is right now. I know where she is. I just don't feel like getting it. It's in my bathroom. I'm already in my bedroom. It's fine, whatever. You know what? I'm gonna be smart and put my phone on not disturb because when the call comes through, it ruins my audio and it just is just not good. So to place that on my lid. I'm gonna do one eye on camera, show you the look, and then we'll proceed from there. Using my Hakuhoro J122R to blend out that concealer on my lid. Brows are already done, and I will list all my complexion products down below. I'm just patting down my brows a little bit so they don't move. All right, let's talk about Subversive, friends. Subversive is my favorite Pat McGrath palette out of all the motherships. I know it's kind of crazy just because I love this color story. Look at it. I'm gonna primarily use this shade and what is that called i think it's oh, i forgot lazarus lazarus is a bomb shade and i think probably the one that i would choose to use as an all-over single eyeshadow look i'm going to take my sonia worker one i like to consider this a double duty brush not only is it designed to lay down color on the lid but is also designed to blend out and since we're dealing just with one shade let's see how we can do with lazarus and create a beautiful bronzy smoky eye going in with lazarus now i didn't set my concealer because i want the ultimate color payoff but look how beautiful that shadow is on its own it's definitely one of my most favorite bronzy shades in the palette but be careful because i put on a lot and so i got it on my inner corner but it's cool man it's cool we'll figure it out patting that on the outer corner as well giving the brush just a wipe i have my microfiber towel on standby and now i'm turning the brush on its side to further smooth out the edges i like to take my shadow out to a v you don't have to do this but that's how i prefer 
my uh, shadow to shape into. Taking my Hakuhodo brush that I used to blend on my concealer and I'm just using that to clean up the inner part of my eye so that the shadow that ended up there will just blend out. Now I'm taking my Wayne Gauze number three, not with any shadow, but I'm using the bristles to further diffuse the edges of this shade. Because look how gorgeous that is on its own. And I think this is prom, well, not the only reason why I love subversive, but I mean, you can go wrong. Now with a smaller brush, this is my Hakuhodo J5523, again with Lazarus, but now pulling that across my lower lash line. I'm taking a tiny bit of Lazarus with my number three, and I'm just further refining here, because this is the part of my uh, eye that, well, my right eye is just finicky. I just make sure that this is smooth and it doesn't appear uneven. You know, I'm just going my work of one filling that up okay that's a little better oh this eye is like the worst so bad now if you want it to this is my nameless max small angled brush if you want it to deepen the lash line you can take the black shadow and just carefully line the base of your lashes you could do that here as well i typically just like to keep it on the outer thirds because that's where I like it to look the smokiest. For the accents, I'm taking my Smith 256 with Skin Show Fever, putting that on the brow bone and also the inner corner of my eye. All right, friends, I'm gonna do the other eye and I'll be right back. Here is the finished look, friends. What do you think? We just used Lazarus all over the lid and we blended it out, put it on the lower lash line, used Extreme Black to just deepen the lash line with a little bit of intensity. I slapped on Lily Lashes in Diamond because I just love how these feel, how they fit. Definitely one of my most favorite wearing lashes. On the lip, I have Bronze Divinity because it's a Pat McGrath video, so you know, Pat McGrath as much as we can. I know this is a little intense for the day, so I would recommend instead of putting this all over your lid and crease, maybe you just put Lazarus on your lid and use the bronzer that you are that day on your crease just for a little bit of dimension because when you do blend this out, it creates fast smoke. Now, if you don't think this is smoky enough, then you can easily go in with the matte shade in here this has crazy depth one of those things with pat's mattes is how it appears in the pan is not necessarily how it appears on the lid these tend to apply a lot darker than how they appear in pan i would just be wary of that because if you want kind of an intense look but not super and you go in heavy with deep shade i think that's what it's called Yes. And you're like, oh my gosh, I have to blend that out. What am I going to do? Just be careful with that shade. Go in slowly, little by little. But Lazarus on its own, I mean, look at this eye. And we just use one shade. And one of the reasons why I love Pat's metallic shades, it has great fluidity. It goes on the lid metallic, but it blends out with ease without any help from a matte. You saw. And I know I use a Sonia brush. It helps that her brushes are immaculate in that way. I get it. Even if you were using a brush from a different brand, I still feel you can make it happen because Pat's eyeshadow formula for her metallics is outstanding. So you'll be fine. Let's move on to look number two. I primarily want to use the blue shades because I feel like it goes in with gigabyte a lot and night creature these are like my top booze bays they're my bay shadows from subversive but mm, i'm so okay this is what we're gonna do we're gonna go in with deep shade first definitely gonna use my sonia g crease pro because this is a smaller brush I have a little bit of control i'm gonna start with that you're a little too low girlfriend i could go in with a little some more fluff i could go in with fluff i'm gonna go in with her blender pro hooray for the restock friends i don't know if by the time i upload this video that is still gonna be in stock but i was excited too because she now is selling them individually which is great okay that's on so let's proceed black metal i know i always say it's blue it's actually more black than blue or do i want to go you know what i'm gonna do blitz amethyst first and then go in with black moon to deepen blitz amethyst with my zoeva 234 i'm gonna see how this does dry i might have to wet it oh not too bad i get the color on there but i just need a little more stick i'm gonna hit with mac there we go that's a really pretty shade now i'm gonna go in with black moon same zoeva 234 
is it even sh oh, i gotta wiggle this brush in man i gotta wiggle it in there we go that's just gonna give us a little more dimension some contrast i have a feeling though that i'm gonna have to wet this shade as well yep it's a little better i'm using my finger to slap on some more blitz amethyst because anytime i apply one of pat's high shine metallics with a finger you just get the most impact what i'll do now is i'm gonna take black moon on the tip of my zoeva 234 and drag it across the lower lash line we definitely got some fallout you know that's just expect it when you load the brush with these textured shadows no problem just carefully kick it off or do your eye makeup first before your foundation definitely going to take the astral shade but to my inner part of the eye oh yes this is a gorgeous shade because it's transformative it has like a pink duochrome flip to it and there's some pink in blitz amethyst and when you combine it it just brings out more of the pink from the blue shade and then i'm going to take i know this is a little bit crazy but vp pink and apply that same zoeva brush but now in the inner third of my eye i feel like you're so far i'm so sorry oh god now we're really close hi i'm taking my hakuhoro j146 with the deep shade and just carefully soften up this line here because i want to tie in what we have on the top and make it match the bottom i'm taking my blender pro and just slowly very carefully feathering out the tip still with skin show fever with my smith brush bra bone actually i'm gonna do something fuzzon i'm gonna take my synthetic 27s wayne goss pencil brush with gigabyte i know and i'm taking that on the inner corner because that's what i want to do to lighten it up because i know it looks dark and you're probably freaking out is fine taking the astral shade pressing it on top of gigabyte so now it has a little more highlights all right friends we're gonna do the other eye and i'll be right back all right friends here's the finished look what do you think we got a little bit of blue a little brown pink gold i mean we got a lot going on but look how beautiful blitz amethyst looks this shade is stunning on the lip, I decided to apply my good old Dior Liquid Rouge and Jungle Matte topped off of Pat McGrath's For Real Liquid Lust Gloss. I love this. And notice, yes, I'm not using Gigabyte and Nightshade on my lid as standout colors because I've done those looks before and I'm trying to use other combination of shades from Subversive if you're getting stuck and you can't figure out what to pair with what. I love, I know Gigabyte can be a little dark on the inner corner. If you're lighter than me, you might have to save this for the lash line or maybe just apply it on your lid. But if you are me or deeper, you could apply this on the inner corner, pop on the astral shade to bring out a little more lightness to it and it is just, I like this a lot. <laughs> All right, friends, let me know what you think down below and let's move on to look number three. Friends, I think I'm gonna be very ambitious and do like very bold wing using Night Creature. <laughs> Though I need to set up my crease first. So let's, let's start slow. Using my Nameless MAC Small Angled Brush, going in with Deep Shade. I'm just gonna go right above my crease where the line naturally is and start to carve out. That looks kind of good. Now my Hakuhoro J5529. Same deep shade, but now I'm gonna further blend it. So we're going to deepen this line. Well, this is the perfect brush for this purpose. Taking my Sonia G Crease Pro with more deep shade, but we're just building up the color very slowly. Gotta be careful here because see how this could get a little out of control. And also I probably should have set my concealer base because this will probably be a little better if it was already powdered down but it's all good taking extreme black but now to the base of deep shade taking my small hakuhoro brush to just gently blend the black in with deep shade closing my lids so i could see with you know what i'm actually doing here this is the most instagrammy eye i think i've ever created oh maybe not i got a couple of ambitious eye looks on this channel i always have a hard time with this technique because it's it's not easy just trying to living it up as you saw i took more 
extreme black probably shouldn't have but whatever taking deep shade with my crease pro and just building the gradient as we go put a little bit black put a little bit deep shade extreme black deep shade back and forth until the gradient looks smooth you get the depth that you're looking for and it's really just spending a gazillion hours blending <laughs> it's really what it's what's all this required now if you feel you don't have a blend out shade in the mothership palette because technically the lightest shade in here is a skin show shade i'm using my charlotte tilbury airbrush flawless finish something something powder so i could technically use this loose powder to blend out this powder so i'm going to take my sonia blender pro with the airbrush powder and just lightly help diffuse the edges and that's gonna help buff out the shadow without feeling like you have to dip out and go into another eyeshadow palette if you have a face powder on standby you can certainly use that to make it happen i know cut creases were so 2018 I mean, they were so 2017, but we're doing one. Using my Hakuhodo J242 with my Fenty Concealer. Yes, I'm not talking because I have to focus. You know, I'm switching brushes. I'm switching brushes. I'm taking up Delium Tools 542. This is actually a lip brush. And I feel it's gonna give us a smoother line. All right, that's, we're going, we're going somewhere. I don't know where, but we're going. Now I'm going back to my J242 to fill up the lid. So any crazy blending we had on the lid is now covered. I have my little J5529 on standby and I wiped it because it had black on it and I'm just carefully now refining the inner portion of the lid and I'm also taking that like concealer got too high I'm gonna make sure we blend that out patting it down so it doesn't travel Smith 256 with the skin show shade and I'm placing that all over the lid making sure I get the outer portion as well taking my Hakuhodo B1 42 because i'm so picky i'm just going back and making sure this is smooth because anytime i like see and i'm like oh you gotta do that over it's ugly inglot pot liner in 77 the blackest of the black and this is a an Utrecht 228 sublette. It's a paintbrush because these wings man they are not easy but if i have like a paintbrush it's a tiny bit easier for me to do a little bit See, that's not smooth enough, man. I need that um, Duraline. I'm gonna try it with my Smith 2, what is this, 203 brush. This is an angled brush because I'm not getting the sharp lines that I need for my little paintbrush because the paintbrush only comes through if the actual gel liner is smooth. This is stressful. Now I'm going back with my nameless small MAC shader, but with Night Creature. I'm gonna have to wet this because I need this to glide, but I also need it to stick to this liner. Oh, so much better. It's like covering our mistakes. All right, not too bad. We got a Night Creature wing. The problem is I think since I'm applying it Wet is taking away some of that glitz that I love so much about Night Creature. But the color is great though. I'm going in with VR Pink, but to the inner part of the wing. Maybe a little more so we could brighten it up. Yep, that's better. I'm actually going to put this on the majority of Night Creature because I feel like it's giving it a little more dimension and pop. All right, so what, should we, what are we going to do about this lower lash line? I say go in with Gigabyte. 
I'm gonna put that on the lower lash line. Taking virtual reality pink on the inner part of my eye. Same brush, I just used the Hakuhodo J242. You're gonna kick off whatever fell from that attempt. All right, friends, I'm gonna try to do this another set and I'll be right back. All right, friends, here's the finished look. Perhaps, I mean, I went from beginner to super advanced. I'm sorry about that. I just gotta, what, what's that? I'm. I look, wait, wait, messy in there. What's going on in there? Uh-oh, we gotta fix that. I just was inspired to do a night creature wing and I thought the best way to showcase the wing was to do a cut crease type of situation. I rarely do this. This was really for fun because why not? If you are into cut creases, then go for it. If you're like, Alicia, I hate you for doing this, then I understand. But I'm digging it, friends. This is fun. I, I mean, it took me a little bit. It maybe took me 15 minutes for each eye. But look at that night creature on the wings. Cute. And Gigabyte on the lower lash line. I love. On the lip, I just have a combination of Pat McGrath's Liquid Lust Gloss in Wicked Whisper and For Real. And yeah, I hope this video helped you out in trying to decide what other ways you could use your Pat McGrath Subversive Mothership eyeshadow palette. As I said before, I have plenty of Pat McGrath videos on my playlist. I think the first video I did for the review was a uh, night creature all over the lid. So if you want to take a look at how I achieved that, you can head over. But if you were getting bored with it and you like to do cut creases and this type of makeup, then go ahead. But if you're like, I'm a single shadow girl, the first look was perfect for me, great. Let me know your feedback down below. I plan on doing this for all my Pat McGrath palettes. I'm not sure when I'll get it done, but then I want to do all of Juvia's Place palettes. And I think that would keep me busy enough to not buy new palettes because now I laid out a huge task for myself. I also want to do a declutter because I already started decluttering, but I didn't get rid of my bronzers and my highlighters that I decluttered. So we could see what I was thinking about giving away, decide on if it was the right choice or not. So I'm gonna follow Michelle Wong's lead on that and just kind of help myself clean up, reorganize, and figure out what's necessary and what I could give away, so. And that is it, my friends. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And until then, I'll see you on here again with another video, chit chat, demo, or review or three look video. Take care and I'll see you again soon.